So this is part one of making a torque. I'm just going to double click on our Dynamesh Sphere 32 so we can start off. And first thing I do when I work in hard surfaces is always turn off perspective mode, just to make things a little bit easier. If we go down to the initialize tab here, or initialize roll up, and set these down to one, we can convert this into a quick cube by hitting the QQ button. I'll press Shift F so we can see the polygroups and you can see we just have a cube here. I'm conscious of what's front and what's back. If I press W to go into the uh, Move tool or the 3D gizmo, I can scale this down and just make it nice and thin. And I'm going to hold down Shift as I approach, as I rotate around to get to a front view. Now I'm going to scale this out to make it nice and long and ultimately we're going to be bending this shape into that. So I know I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ridges. But I, I also know that I need a lot of polygons in order to bend this. So if I change to our Z modeler tool, BZM, and I hover over an edge, by default this is insert a single loop. I'm going to change that to insert multiple edge loops. And that means that I can now click on an edge and drag up or down until I get a reasonable amount of loops that's going to allow us to actually bend this object. I know that I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ridges. So I can click on one of the vertical lines and click and drag until I see six or seven of these yellow or red um, loops here. So with that selected, I now know that I can create ridges. And I also know that uh, it's going to work. It's going to allow me to bend this. So first thing I want to do now is taper it because I want these ends to be narrower than this. This is a much th uh, wider piece of the torque than these ends up here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press W. And when I do, anytime you're working with, with uh, the gizmo or the, def the deformers in here, you always want to reset your gizmo to make sure that it works with the world. I'm going to hold down Alt and click on this little icon here just to make sure that my gizmo is working and is oriented correctly. Once I've done that, I can now click the little cog icon and I can choose taper. So taper gives me these little cones here and I can choose to drag one out. I'm going to take one on the left here. I'm just going to make this a little bit thinner than it is in the center here. And that's what I'm going to use to get that difference in the width here. I've done it on one side, so I can just hit mirror and weld under geometry, modified topology, mirror and weld. And that will mirror it over to the x-axis, as long as I'm looking from the front here. You'll see now, if I press Q to get out of that, uh, because we mirrored, it introduced a new edge loops. These are all evenly spaced along here, all these vertical lines, but it introduced a new one because we mirrored and welded. So we can get rid of that by holding down Alt and just clicking on that. So now we have the same amount of loops everywhere. So this is great. This is ready to go. If I was to just bend this now into that shape, though, it would be flat on the surface. And you can see here that the torque, this outside part is touching, but this is raised. This is not sitting on the surface. That's because it's going around the neck and shoulders kind of thing. Like, so we're going to have to actually take that into account when we go to build this. So I don't want to bend this yet because that's going to make that much more difficult to raise later on. So what I want to do is look at it from the side view and think, well, what angle would that be? What angle is this from the table? So I'm just going to rotate this around. And I'm going to say, well, if that's the bottom that's touching the table here, that's the bottom, then roughly this height is how, how much I want it to be raised off the surface. Having done this, I always have to reset my gizmo. So I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to reset the gizmo so it's pointing upwards in the world. So this is now working for me. It's now ready to go. I'm now, if I look from the top view and I'm rotating around and pressing Shift as I approach to snap to that view, I know I've held down all that this has been reset. So now I can go back to my gizmo up here, my deformer, uh, and I can choose bend arc. So bend arc is now going to work with world space. So I can choose this green cone here. And if I click and drag, you can see we're going to bend this in one direction or the other. So I'm going to bend it up. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I can change the width of this by taking this white uh, white cone and moving this to the size that we want. So I'm trying to approach this uh, shape here. So it comes around quite far uh, and we can just make this as wide as thick, but we're now getting this tapered side here that's not as, as wide as this part down here, which is what we were looking for. It's also all going upwards off the surface here. So it's sitting off the surface like that. 
which is exactly what we're looking for. So once we're happy, we can hit the cone icon and we can say accept this, we're good with that. What we want to do now is create these ridges. So you'll see that we already have these polygroups set up. So if I hover over a polygon and I choose Q mesh, I can say Q mesh polygroup all. And that's going to look at everything with that. You see, if I did that, first of all, it's going to take these ones in the center and I don't want that. So my other alternative is to just say Q mesh a poly loop. So if I do that and I click the way the Q mesh poly loop works is the, the arrow, the, the orange line direction is where it's going to create the loop. If we want it in this direction, up or down, I'll use either here or here. But if I wanted to go along this, along the loop, I'll make sure it's pointing either left or right. So I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to pull one out to get some kind of ridge. Now once I've done that once, I can just click on the next one and it will be the exact same height that it's going to give me for each of these. I'm going to go over here to turn on dynamic or press D to turn on dynamic and see what that looks like. Happy with that. But this isn't how torques work. This is a thin piece of metal that's been hammered onto a shape. So underneath these ridges, it's hollow. Right? They're, they're basically just pushed up metal. They're not the same thickness on the bottom as they are on the top. So we need to separate out the top and the bottom somehow. So I'm going to go back to this. Uh, I don't particularly like this shader. I'm going to change this material to skin uh, startup material and it just shows you those colors a little bit cleaner, cleaner. So what I want to do is I want to separate out these top polygons with the bottom ones, but we have this kind of awkward stuff that's going on here. So what we can do is we can use our Z model brush again. I'm going to hover over a polygon and this time I'm going to press the space bar. I'm going to change it to poly group and I'm going to say poly loop. You see with this, we have the same thing here with the orange line. I want to go in this direction. I don't want to go along here. I want to go around this way. So if I click once on that line there, or even, and then I hit uh, Alt, every time, as long as I'm holding my pen down, like hit Alt, it's just gonna change that color for me. And I recommend you do this a couple of times until you find a color that is you like. So once I've done that, I now have a way to select this, but it's very hard for me to select this polygroup because I don't have an actual edge on it. So normally you hit Control Shift, and then you click on a color, and then that will isolate whatever colors it's looking at. Here I'm getting both blue and yellow, for example, but I only want the blue. So the easiest way to do that is just click on this again with the multiple, uh, insert. <laughs> when you hover over an edge, it's on set to insert multiple edge loops. You click once, you get this new edge loop here. And if you're getting too many, if it's doing this, just drag it back while you're holding and until you only get one. And now you can control shift click on that group and that will isolate that group. If you control shift drag or control shift click on that group again, it's going to invert that selection. And we now have both the top and the separate piece and the bottom piece and they're not touching each other. So as long as they're not touching each other, we can go down to poly groups and we can say auto groups. And that's going to look at any object that is not welded to anything else currently on the screen and it's going to give it a separate color. So we now get a separate colors for top and for bottom. I can hit control shift and tap on the interface to get everything back. And then we now have top, bottom and center. I'm only interested in the top. So I can now hit control shift and click on that and that will isolate just the top. And now I can delete the hidden stuff from our geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. So that's basically gone. So right now, if I press D for dynamic to see what this looks like, okay, we have a torque, it's looking good. We've got those ridges. It doesn't have any depth though. So I wanna create some depth. I'm gonna press Shift D to turn that off again. So you could hover over polygon here and choose Q mesh and say all polygons, for example. So if I hover over this and I choose Q mesh, all polygons. Now when I click, if I click and I drag out, it's gonna give me this, it's gonna make these thicker. And that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna undo that. But if I click and I drag down, it's actually going to push them in. But we're also, it's going to invert it. So you see the way the normals are inverted? So by pushing it down, we haven't made it thicker. We basically pushed it in, but we flipped all of the direction of the faces. So to fix that, we go down to display properties and choose flip. And that will flip it back into its normal position. Now this basically, this is what we have. That's one way to do this. If you don't like that way, you can undo this. And you can go to geometry and under edge loop, we can use panel loops. 
I'm going to set the amount of loops by 5 down to 1. I'm going to turn off polish. And now when I hit panel loops, that's going to give us some thickness to this as well. Um, and you can see we get the, pretty much the same result. So this is the way I would expect it to work, that that piece of thin metal is now going up and down rather than the same ridge on both sides. This is how we're going to make our torque. And this is step one. And next time we'll do these two pieces up here. So yeah, hope this helps. And uh, you know, if you want to modify this at all, you can still, you know, you can rotate this into place if it's not quite flat or whatever. Um, and just make sure that you have a, a good starting point for that. Cool. All right. See you next time. Bye.